Hi folks, HR Funk here with a classic rifle review. Now a lot of us are waiting very impatiently for Ruger to bring rifles back to the market under the Marlin brand and I thought while we were impatiently waiting I would do a classic rifle review of my 444 Marlin. This is a rifle that I've owned for probably about 20 years now but even so it's only once I think ever been in front of the camera before and that was for a very brief period of time. So today I'm going to do a detailed review of this classic rifle and before we're all done I'll head out to the range and show you how it shoots. Now, if you hear someone discussing the 444 Marlin, they could be talking about either a rifle or the cartridge that rifle shoots. And the story goes like this. Back in the early 1960s, the 4570 had been discontinued in any then current production lever action rifles. So there was really no big bore lever action option available at that time that was a current production firearm. So Marlin, in conjunction with Remington, came out with a brand new cartridge that they called the 444 Marlin, and I'll show you that momentarily. And for that cartridge, they developed a rifle to go along with it. And the rifle really is just the Marlin 336 that is scaled up for the bigger, heavier cartridge that this rifle now fires. Now, as I said, the original 444 Marlin cartridge was produced by Remington, and it featured a 240 grain jacketed soft point bullet that left the muzzle of a rifle at about 2,400 feet per second, which resulted in a muzzle energy of about 3,000 foot pounds. So this is a potent cartridge. Now, dimensionally, the 444 Marlin is essentially the same as the 44 Magnum handgun cartridge, except the 444 Marlin is about an inch longer. Now that extra inch of case obviously allows for a lot greater powder capacity and a lot more oomph on the part of the bullet. So when that original ammunition was first fielded by hunters, there was a complaint that came back, and the complaint was that when those bullets struck large, heavy bone, thick skinned animals, the bullet was not holding together as well as those hunters would have liked it to. Well, Remington came back and they said that they thought that problem was coming from hand loaders who were using regular 44 Magnum bullets in their 444 Marlin hand loads and those handgun bullets were not intended for the 444 Marlin velocities and that's what was causing the bullet problems. Now according to Remington they used a different 240 grain jacketed soft point bullet in the 444 Marlin cartridge than they did in their 44 Magnum handgun cartridge. At this point who knows but ultimately this problem was dealt with by Hornady and in 1965 they came out with a 265 grain jacketed soft point bullet, which is what I have right here. And this was intended for 444 Marlin velocities. And this bullet works very well. I've used this hunting before and it does an extremely good job. This bullet with the load that I have in this cartridge is being pushed at about 2200 feet per second or 2250 right in there. So again, a lot of oomph on the part of this cartridge and it does, as I said, a very good job. Now the other nice thing about the 444 Marlin cartridge is it does lend itself well to hand loads. And what I have here is a 330 grain hard cast bullet, also in the 444 Marlin cartridge. And this bullet with the load I'm using is traveling at just under 2200 feet per second when it leaves the muzzle. So again, a very potent load that comes from this cartridge. The nice thing about the full length rifle that I'm going to be talking about here in a moment is that with that full length barrel, you get the absolute best ballistics out of your 444 Marlin cartridge. So now that we've discussed the cartridge, let's take a close up look at the rifle. So as promised, here is the close up look at my 444 Marlin rifle. And as you can see, this is the one rifle in my collection, or I should say the one lever gun that I have attached an optic to. Now, generally, I don't care for optics on lever action rifles because I don't like what it does to the lines. But since I use this rifle for hunting, I did want the extra precision that's afforded by the optic. So I went with the smallest scope pretty much that I could find, which is this low variable power Bushnell. And this does do a nice job of adding some accuracy to the rifle. But otherwise, as we go through this review, everything else is exactly as this rifle came from the factory. Now, as I mentioned before, the 444 is essentially a scaled up version of the 336. Now, I don't mean that it's actually physically larger, but it is beefed up to be able to deal with that more powerful 444 Marlin cartridge. 
So I'll start this review of the 444 rifle from the rear and work my way forward. And as you can see, the 444 Marlin is fitted with a recoil pad, but you can also see this is not a real thick recoil pad. And when we consider that the 444 Marlin cartridge generates about the same power as the 405 Winchester cartridge that I reviewed a year or so ago, and that cartridge back in the day was used as an African big game cartridge, I can tell you that the recoil generated by the 444 is enough to make you wish this recoil pad was just a little bit thicker. Moving forward slightly to the stock itself, we can see a very handsome black walnut stock. And Marlin always used black walnut on these rifles back in the day, American black walnut that is. And I always thought it made for very nice looking stocks. We can also see the undercut comb and also the checkering on the pistol grip here. And I always did like this checkering pattern that Marlin used. Now there were versions of this rifle that had a straight stock. This one, as you can see, has the pistol grip stock. I think I prefer the pistol grip on this particular rifle, but that really changes, or my taste as to whether I like the pistol grip or prefer the straight stock changes from rifle to rifle. I do like it on this one. And because we have the pistol grip stock, there is also the curved lever that you can see underneath the stock there. Moving forward to the receiver. And actually, before I get to the receiver, I'll point out this little hammer attachment right here. And this was included with all Marlin rifles back in the day. Since the top was drilled and tapped for a scope mount, this was a nice little feature that they added because with the optic in place, trying to reach that hammer spur with your thumb would be very difficult. But with the attachment, it was very easy to reach over and cock the rifle. So that was one thing I wanted to point out. We can also see that this is one of the newer rifles. This was actually manufactured, I believe, around 2002. So it has the cross bolt safety. Now, some people don't care for that whatsoever. I really don't care, I just ignore the thing, but it is there. And I think after 1988, all of the rifles that Marlin made of the 336 variety had that cross bolt safety. And here we can see the loading gate on the side of the receiver. This was a common feature for all of the Marlin rifles, both the 1894 and the 1895. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but when Marlin reintroduced the 4570 in essentially this same rifle, in uh, right around 1970, if memory serves, they dubbed it the 1895. So the rifles that were intended for the larger cartridges, the 444, the 4570, were designated as 1895 rifles, even though essentially they were still the 336 design. As you can see also, this rifle does feature very nice bluing on both the receiver and the barrel. And the rifle has a few handling marks, as I said, I've used this in the field before. So you'll notice a nick or a ding here or there, but that's just a little bit of added character that has come to the rifle during the time that I've owned it. Moving a little farther forward onto the barrel here, we can see, at least I think you can see it, the buckhorn sight right here. Now it does flip down and I've got it in the flip down position, even though it doesn't really interfere with the scope right there. Now, if it was a scope with a larger bell at the objective end, that could be something that would require that sight to be flipped down. Even so, that's a nice little feature of that sight. And I believe these sights were made for Marlin by marbles, because I've got some of those on some other rifles. And for what they are, they are a pretty nice little sight. Moving up to the fore end of the rifle, we can see the checkering pattern once again on the forestock itself, and I'll make that a little bit bigger so hopefully you can see it better. Again, I always like the checkering that they put on these. It looks nice and it also is functional. It helps you grip the fore end of the rifle. We can also see the front end of the five shot magazine, and this does accommodate five rounds in the magazine, and if you want to, you can top it off with one round in the chamber. And also, we can see the 20 inch barrel. The barrel has a one in 20 inch turn ratio, and it also has the Ballard rifling in this particular rifle. Now that was something that went back and forth somewhat over the years. The original 444s that came out had the micro groove barrel, but this one does have the Ballard style rifling. As I said, it has a one in 20 inch twist ratio. And at the muzzle, we can see Marlin's classic hooded front sight. Now these hoods do come off, so some shooters or some hunters don't prefer to have the hood on, so you can take it off very easily, or you can keep it in place depending upon what your personal preference might be. So disassembly of these rifles for cleaning and maintenance is very easy. 
The first thing I'm going to do, as always, is check the action to make sure that it's empty. And I'm going to close the bolt about halfway, and the next thing I'm going to do is remove this screw right here. So with the screw removed, the lever now very easily comes out of the rifle, and I can set that off to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the bolt. Now the reason that I positioned it about halfway closed before was so I could grasp the rear of the bolt and just pull it straight out from the back of the receiver, just like that. Now you'll notice there is a groove on the side of the bolt, and that fits the ejector, which we can now see right there. And I'll bring that up, try to get a little bit closer. The ejector is that piece you can see on the other side of the receiver. Now that comes out also. And before I take it out, I will show you this pin on this side of the receiver. That is actually holding the ejector in place. So when I remove the ejector from the receiver, just like that, you can see that that hole is now empty and right there that little piece is the pin that you saw projecting into that hole. So when you reinstall it you need to make sure you slide the ejector into its groove and be certain that that pin finds its way into the proper location in the hole. Now a nice thing about the way the Marlin rifles disassemble is the fact that I can now clean the bore from the rear so I don't have to worry about possibly damaging the muzzle crown because I can insert my cleaning rod from the rear of the rifle and make certain that I don't do any kind of damage while I'm cleaning it. So for reassembly the first thing I'll do is reinstall that ejector and I need to make sure that I get it back into that groove just like I was talking about before. And I might need to do this off camera just so I can use both hands. I think I will. But all I'm going to do is slide it back in there and make sure it locates in that groove. And as you can see, the ejector is now properly installed in that groove. Now when I reinsert the bolt from the rear of the receiver, again, this groove is going to have to line up with the extractor. Now I've always found that I have to pull back on the hammer slightly as I insert the bolt in order to get it to smoothly go into place. And I'm going to try to do this so you can see it on camera. There. And I can feel that when I turn it just right and that groove lines up with the ejector, I can tell that it's in the proper place. And again, I'm going to push it about halfway closed. And when I turn the rifle around, again, you can see that pin from the ejector right there so we know everything is right back where it's supposed to go. Now when I reinstall the bolt, I'm going to be inserting it in the bottom of the receiver and moving it forward, and there's a groove in the bottom of the bolt that the lever is going to slide into, and we can see it's in the proper place right there. Now I'm just going to reinstall that screw. Okay, so granted this is not a precision rifle, but it's always nice to have a good trigger on a rifle, regardless of exactly what kind it is. So I thought it might be interesting to see just exactly where the trigger breaks on this one. I've never done anything to this. This is a completely stock trigger. And I'll see if I can get a good pull on it here. Five pounds, 3.6 ounces. So just over five pounds. Let's try one more pull. That's actually pretty good for a lever action rifle. And a little bit lighter that time. Four pounds, 13.8 ounces. So just about five pounds for the trigger pull on that rifle. And again, that's not too bad for a lever action. So folks, that's pretty much everything we can cover about the 444 in the shop. So now, as you can see, I've arrived at the range to do a little bit of shooting. And I was originally going to do some shooting on paper targets with the 444 to demonstrate its accuracy. But as I was driving out here, that struck me as a little bit silly. 
This is a hunting rifle. It is certainly accurate enough for any kind of hunting you might want to do. So instead of paper targets, my precision target out here today is going to be a couple of water bottle desperados. So we'll see if the 444 is accurate enough to ruin their day. And of course, here comes a train. <laughs> uh, I'll put those uh, desperados at as soon as the train gets done <laughs> at about 40 yards and we'll see what the accuracy looks like. So first up is going to be the load featuring the 265 grain Hornady jacketed soft point. Let's see if it's accurate enough to meet our Desperado accuracy standard. <laughs> I'd say that load was accurate enough. I'd say that 265 grain Hornady load was more than accurate enough. As best I can tell, that was a dead center hit. So now, let's see if the 330 grain hard cast load is just as accurate. <laughs> I'd say the 330 grain hard cast load also met the accuracy standard. Folks, the little Desperados are fine for testing our precision accuracy, but they don't do much for showing the pure power of the 444 cartridge. For that, I'm going to try a couple of bigger Desperados, and we'll see what a ton and a half of muzzle energy looks like when it impacts them. And first up, once again, will be the load with the 265 grade Hornady jacketed soft point. <laughs> so now let's try that 330 grain load and see what it looks like. <laughs> I'd say that plaque packs plenty of power also. <laughs> Folks, I think it's safe to say the 444 Marlin, both the rifle and the cartridge, is accurate enough and powerful enough for just about any big game you might want to hunt. Now, I don't think I would use it for rabbits or squirrels, <laughs> but anything that you could really call big game is going to be something you could hunt with the 444 Marlin. So now, let's head back to the shop and wrap things up. So there you have it folks, that's my classic review of both the 444 Marlin rifle and the 444 Marlin cartridge. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, warbirdbunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel, and there's also some new t-shirts for the holidays and some HR Funk stickers there. So if you go to warbirdbunker.com, be sure to check out all the gear there. And if you use my discount code, which is HR Funk for you, that'll get you to 10% off anything you purchase from warbirdbunker.com. See you next time, folks. Until then, good shooting. Bye-bye. <laughs>